strong only time I'm not going is um, I was driving to the car and I'm going to the back of the stop. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today, August 21st, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord together. And I want to welcome those who might be joining us as visitors or guests this morning. We are glad that you are here and hope that you feel right at home. Welcome to those joining us online. We acknowledge your presence as well and are glad that you are able to join with us um, uh, through, through the live stream uh, and worship this morning. Uh, if you are visiting, visiting us this morning, uh, we would like to encourage you to uh, leave some contact information. A portion of the bulletin does tear out, and you can leave that following the service uh, with contact information so we can follow up with you and your family and see how we may be able to minister to you. You can put that in the offering plates that are located on the sides of the stage and also in the vestibule. Also, those are the places that you can give of your tithes and offerings following the service if you have not done uh, so at this time. I would like to remind you of a few announcements. You'll see those listed in the bulletin. But don't forget that next Sunday uh, is our Blessings of the Backpack Sunday. And so if, um, if, if you uh, have a student in your family, please encourage them to come um, all ages of, of, of uh, being a student and bring their backpack with them. Um, also, we will be recognizing teachers and administration and having a blessing uh, that day. Uh, following the service, we will have a, a cover this covered dish lunch uh, in the fellowship hall and so do prepare for that there's information here in the bulletin um, about that uh, and if you would like to contribute um, uh, uh, to the fried chicken portion of that the cost is ten dollars per chicken and you can see angie evans she is collecting the money um, if you can't get it to her you can bring it to nail during the week is there an addition So there's a need for nursery workers next Sunday and, and quite often as well. So uh, we will, if you want to serve with our little ones um, and be a blessing to them, um, there is all, always an opportunity, but especially uh, next Sunday there is a, a need for that. So uh, please see Holly um, if you can help um, 
do also want to let you know that Wednesday evenings um, were originally going to be starting on September the 7th. We, however, are going to push that back to September the 14th. Uh, we will have uh, catering as part of that, and we'll get the prices to you very soon. Um, and so we thank you for uh, taking the time to sign up, um, you know, to, to give us an idea of whether you will be part of Wednesday evenings in the fall. Um, we're very excited about kicking that back off. And so if you have any other specific questions, please ask, uh, but we will be getting details in the coming weeks as far as the cost and, and such to you. Uh, this morning, I would also like to let you know that... Um, uh, that Greg Sugg, many of you have probably met him before, Greg Sugg and his girlfriend Vivian Smith have been joining us for worship for a couple of months, and uh, Greg's brother Jeffrey passed away unexpectedly this past week, and uh, there's a graveside service I'm going to be officiating uh, this afternoon in, in Snow Hill at the cemetery at 3 p.m., and um, just want to let you know, you, you'll see the, their name in uh, in the, the prayer list, and so uh, Jeffrey Sugg is Greg Sugg's brother, and please do be in prayer for them, and if any of you uh, know Greg and Vivian well and would like to attend the graveside service, you're welcome to. Again, that's 3 p.m. Uh, this afternoon uh, at the, the Snow Hill Cemetery. At this time, I want to invite you to join your hearts uh, with me in prayer as we seek the Father together. And God, we give you thanks for this time and this space and for this family of faith. We Give you thanks for all the things that you are continuing to do through us and, and in this community, uh, the ways that you continue to pour out your blessing. Uh, Lord, we pray that we would experience you um, today during this time of worship as we lay ourselves before you, as we give you our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand and join us in our song of praise. I give you my heart.
Our psalm reading this morning comes from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I want to uh, encourage you to take a few moments to uh, pick a few people on our prayer list and to silently pray for them where uh, you are seated. And then I will uh, end with the morning prayer. God, we give you thanks that you continually are working all things for our good. We might not see that in the circumstances that we go through, but Lord, when we lean completely upon you, we find that it is true. God, we sometimes question where life takes us, and uh, we sometimes think that in our wisdom we could plan it a little better. But God, we thank you that you, again, are always working things for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purposes. Lord, as we look at this prayer list and consider our family of faith and those who are going through various trials right now, uh, Lord, we do ask for your blessing upon them. God, we pray that prayers for healing, uh, prayers for, uh, for fullness of life, would be answered by you for them. God, we pray that you would ease people's pain and suffering, that you would bring peace, joy, and healing. God, we know that you are the great physician and uh, that all things are, are, are in your capable and loving and mighty hands. God, we also recognize the truth that while we are uh, sojourners together on this earth, Lord, that there it is a land, there is a realm, there is heaven that we will experience one day that is our destiny. So God, while we are called to live lives of, of joy and of faith and of love and obedience to you now, God, let us also remember what is to come and let us, to, let, let us uh, anchor ourselves in the beauty of that hope and that promise. God, we pray for our brothers and sisters on this list and we pray that you would help us uh, know how to speak words of comfort, speak words of love, speak words of truth from your scriptures into their lives. That you would show us how to be present fully with them, to journey life together. <clears throat> Again, Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray for many days ahead and, 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 and beautiful days ahead. God, we pray for our community. We pray for the people who live in our community who... Uh, who, who we're called to reach, who we're called to share uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with in such a way that, that, that they want to know Jesus as well. And we pray that you would not just let us stop there, but that you would give us the words to speak into their lives, the encouragement to give, and, and the courage to invite them into what you're doing here at First Baptist Church. So Lord, as we continue to worship you this morning, we uh, lift up 
uh, these people to you and ask that your will be done in Jesus' holy name. It's in his name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand again as we sing our song of worship. God, you're so good. Yeah.
PC. <coughs> Today our Old Testament reading comes from Genesis 12, 1 through 8. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his right wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed into the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Sechem, there he had set up camp beside the Oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated to, to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and I to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now if I can have all the kids come up. Come on up, Ivy. You're good. You get to be solo today. You good with that? Yeah? Good. All right. So I'm actually going to start by reading a verse at the rest of the congregation is going to hear from Pastor Graham in a little bit. And this is from Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is the confidence that what, we hope, that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Faith is a big word, and it's really hard sometimes. And I have up here things that I just don't understand. <laughs> like this is a music CD. I know that I can take that CD out, pop in the CD player, and a song's going to come on. How does it work? Not a clue, but I know it does. Just like this song, I know that God puts heart, songs in my heart. So when I'm feeling down or worried or just really happy, songs will come on the radio or just pop in my head that enhance that feeling. If I'm feeling down, it's a song that lifts me up and gives me hope again. God's amazing how he can work through music. Another thing is a phone. I know I can pick this up, dial a number, and talk to someone miles, hundreds, thousands of miles away. Do I know how that works? Not a clue, but I know it does. Just like that, prayer. I don't know how God can hear all of our prayers. I don't know how that works, but I know when I talk to God, he talks back to me. So I don't know how, but I know it works. Another thing is medicine, my little medicine pouch here, my sinus medicine, which is all going to fall out, so I'm just going to show you, see, yep, my sinus medicine is in here, so whenever I take it, I feel better, but how does my sinus medicine know exactly what to do, how does it work, I don't know, but I do know it works, which is why I keep taking it, just like that, I know that God can heal our hearts, we may have the deepest heart possible, but God can heal it. I don't know how he does, but he does it. Something else. Now, this is old school because I forgot the one from home. So I grabbed nails. Ms. Nail in the office. What is this? It's a calculator, an adding machine. I know that when I plug it in, I can, it can do all sorts of math for me. I don't know how it's built or how it works, but I know it does. Just, whoop, I don't need to break it because Ms. Nail might be mad at me. But just like my math problems with the calculator, God can solve all my problems. I just have to have faith in him to solve those problems. Now, I don't know how he does it, but he does. That's the awesome thing about faith. We have a couple more. What's this? I push that button and the little light comes on. I'm not going to shine in your eyes. But, again, I don't know how that works, but I know it does. And I know that when it's dark times, 
we can see the light of God. He's there and shining bright for us. And again, I don't know how he does it, but I know he does. And then lastly, I have a remote that controls our TV. Press a button, TV comes on. Press another button, ch ch uh, channel changes, whatever. Again, I don't know the, the functioning, like all the insides. I know it works, and that's all I need to know. It's like God is in control of everything. God controls everything. So we don't need to worry. We need to have faith because God has everything in control. So that is faith, not knowing how it works, but knowing it does. And God is exactly like that. We don't have to know how he works. We just have to know he does. And that is faith. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for your son and all the life that you've given us. Lord, help us to have faith in you and help us to hold strong in that faith. It's in your name I pray. Amen. This morning, I'm going to start a three-week sermon series about faith. You know, faith is one of those things that, if I was to ask you about your faith journey, some, I find that a lot of people want to compare their faith journey to other people. And so I want to encourage you this morning and through the next couple of weeks as we consider uh, our faith and our journey of faith, I want to encourage you not to consider your journey of faith compared to anyone else's. Can, can, we, can we do that from the get-go? Will that be all right? That will save us a whole lot of time because it's really not fruitful when we look at someone else, especially those people in our lives who we know from a very young age and we've experienced to have a whole lot of faith when we all are always holding ourselves up to that standard. I always like to... Uh, to uh, speak of this community, this, this church body as being a community or a family of faith because it is our, is our you know, faith that we each have in Jesus Christ that binds us 
together. Uh, but again, I, I hope that in this series we may find bits of truths each week that we could apply to our lives and to our journeys of faith that might embolden us as we seek the Father together, seek Him individually, and experience Him um, in our lives. So we're going to be checking out the book of Hebrews. Um, and if you've never done much uh, study in the book of Hebrews, there are a couple of very um, interesting things. The first is that um, uh, the book of Hebrews has been the source of, of many Christianese jokes. The question is, who is supposed to brew the coffee in the morning? And the answer is Hebrews, Hebrews right? The, uh, and, and in fact, I, I was a really little kid. So every time I read the, the, the book of Hebrews, I have some baggage from this for some reason. I, I was really like maybe like Luke's age, and uh, there was a worship band at the church um, of, made up of grown-ups, okay? And uh, they, we had gone to this neighboring town to do this, this uh, worship thing, and my dad was leading on the keyboards, and it was one of those real emotional, just, you know, like, not a real, but it's kind of like, you know, was, everything was coming to a head, and my dad's given an invitation, and I'm over on the drums. I was a little drummer boy over there playing on the drums and, 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 and watching this happen, and, and uh, uh, all of a sudden, my, my dad's like, you know, leading people to Jesus, talking about the Lord and everything, and all of a sudden, this grown man with a microphone just butts in the middle of it and goes, hey, I got a joke for you. And then he, he does that joke. I mean, come on. Anyway, so uh, he, he must have been a little, the guy could sing, but when it came to situations like that, he was very tone deaf. Um, so, th so that's one of the interesting things, though, about the book of Hebrews. It's been the source of many jokes. Uh, but it's also an interesting book. It's in our Bible, and we don't really know who the author is. It's, it's in the canon of, 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 of the 66 books that make up the library that is the Bible, yet there's uncertainty about exactly who wrote it. We do know that the author knew Timothy. We see that in chapter 13, verse 23. We also see that he was not uh, an eyewitness to Jesus. That's mentioned in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The early manuscripts of the book of Hebrews uh, bared the name to the Hebrews. Um, it was written to Jewish Christians as well as Gentile Christians who had been drawn to the Jewish religion first and then into Christianity. Uh, the author knew that uh, the people that he was writing to really longed to see him again, and he longed to see them. We see that in chapter 13, verse 19. There are two primary themes, though, in, in the book of Hebrews. The first is encouragement for Christians to endure under persecution. They were undergoing some persecution. Now, there have been a times in, in early Christianity when, when persecution was much more heightened, uh, but they were still going through uh, quite a bit of persecution. It was also, uh, secondly, warnings to them not to abandon their faith in Jesus Christ. Encouragement for them to hold on to the faith that they had in Jesus Christ. The writer tells the Hebrews that Jesus Christ is greater than any angel, greater than any priest, or old covenant practice. That Christians must not forsake the salvation that Jesus has given them through grace. That they must hold to the faith of Jesus and encourage one another to do the same. If you've been around the church long or been in many Sunday school classes, the first passage that we're going to look at today as uh, we look, uh, begin this uh, three-week series is the, the, the passage that comes in Hebrews chapter 11. Many call this the Hall of Faith, like the Hall of Fame. And so we're going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, and then verses 8 through 16, and then I have a few things I want to share about faith and about the, uh, the journeys of faith that we're called to, and uh, we'll go from there. Now the writer says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abraham, when called to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. 
And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things they promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you for the lives of faith that we are called to live And Lord, we acknowledge that it's not always easy to live by faith. It's a calling that we have and it's a gift, uh, but we don't all experience in the same measure sometimes. For some of us, we have grown up in circumstances that make faith difficult. For others, we've grown up in circumstances that make it quite easy. But regardless of what our background is, Lord, as we approach the scriptures today, as we see what the writer of Hebrews had for these early Christians, we pray that our eyes might be opened to live lives of faith that please you and that lead us close to you, Lord. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. The first thing we see right off the bat here in verse 1, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We are told very early that faith is not about sight. Faith is not about what we can see we, or understand. We had these examples that were laying on the altar this morning uh, that Holly was showing us. And, 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 and many of us probably don't understand how those things work. You, know, you take an iPad or you're joining us online on the computer. And if you were to take one of those screws out and try to do anything to it, we'd break it, wouldn't we? I mean, I, don't, I would. I would like void the warranty. You can't get it fixed anymore. Just have to throw it away and buy a brand new iPad, brand new computer because I wouldn't know what in the world to do but we have faith that those things are going to work or when we wake up in the morning and we slide out of bed and we have that moment where we're on the edge of the bed but we haven't yet touched the floor we have faith that we're going to land somewhere don't we we have faith that gravity is going to work my children have faith but they test that faith in gravity every day (laughs) yesterday they spent three hours trying to see if they can wind wind the uh the the, the swing around the swing set just swing so hard they just kept going you know and just like a rocket shooting through the through the sky and uh, they they test those things every day we have faith that when we breathe in that the air that we can't see is going to go into our lungs and it is going to sustain the cells that need oxygen and give us life we have faith in these things but sometimes we don't apply that same faith to the spiritual journey do we sometimes it's a little harder it's a little it's a little bigger of a step. The first thing that we're, we're told here is that faith is not sight, but faith is a kind of seeing. Many of us have come to faith in Jesus Christ because we saw something compelling in the life of Jesus. We read the Gospels and we were spoken to by Jesus and the, maybe the parables or his teachings or his miracles. His death and the way he laid his life down willingly us seeing that has caused our faith to grow and then understanding these eyewitness accounts that the early christians had and how it changed them forever of his resurrection of him coming back to life and then ascending into heaven and then the holy spirit coming and dwelling faith is not about seeing but it is a kind of spiritual seeing we're told here in the scriptures that Um, that this is what they were commended for. The early Hebrews and the ancients, these people, the hall of faith, and we skipped a few of them. We we skipped Abel, Enoch, we skipped Noah. Uh, There are a few others that we're not going to talk about, Moses, uh, Joseph, and and, and such. But go and read through Hebrews chapter 11, and we see all of these people who live great lives of faith. They trusted in the next step, although they didn't know exactly where it would be. I've had many pastoral conversations to people who also found faith because they saw faith lived in someone else. I mentioned that a few times already. I can think of the people in my life 
growing up at the church that, that I grew up in or people who I, uh, you know, professors from seminary or churches that I've served and even some of you here at our church, here, and, you know, hearing uh, people share testimonies of lives lived with faith. And that always strengthens me and encourages me. It's a type of seeing. And I hope it's a type of seeing that you experience as well. The second truth that I see here in these scriptures is that faith is not supported by the dominant culture. Faith is not supported by the dominant culture. If we were to take ourselves back into this Roman and Greek empire that Jesus was born into, what he experienced, you know, the Jewish people were, were basically owned in a way by the, 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 the Romans, and, and the Romans were the, the rulers. The, the, the lay of the land was, was, uh, was governed by them. The Roman Empire instituted pagan polytheistic worship. So this is what their worship looked like. You were to go to the altars and you were to, to, uh, to, to, to give offerings and, and worship to, to statues of Zeus, of Hera, Poseidon, Demeter, Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Ares, Aphrodite, Hermes, Hestia, and Pandora with her box of blessings and evils, just to name a few. And if you were going to be a really good citizen of the Greek and Roman Empire, you worshipped every single one of them. Well, the Jewish people and the early Christians, that's not what they did. In, in, in fact, they, being monotheistic and worshipping one God, were ridiculed because of that. Their worship of God was not supported by their culture. And I love our country, but we cannot let our country be the ones uh, who set laws and put things in place that make us be Christians. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't let the people that are uh, living life, even in our community, make the decisions that give us faith. That's only something that we can do on our own, standing before the Lord. We're the only people who can allow our faith to grow or not to grow. To allow something outside be it government, be it possessions, be it wealth, be it the accumulation of whatever fill in the blank to finally get us to a place that we can have faith in the things that we have. It's no more than us being part of the Roman and Greek empire and going and offering homage to each and every little God that will not fill, that aren't real, and that do not satisfy. So, some truths about faith that we see here. It's not about sight, but it is a kind of seeing. The ancients were commended for their faith that, that grew because of Christ, because of God, and not being supported by dominant culture. And a third is that our journey of faith should be rooted in Abraham's and Sarah's. Holly read for us earlier Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, where it says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go to your country, to your people, and your father's household in the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing to all. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord told him. I had someone ask me one time, they said, Graham, do you think that that Abram and Sarah, do you think they were the first ones that God asked to follow? And I said, I, I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question, isn't it? It's an interesting way to think about things. You know, what if they were the second people that were asked, and the first people were like, nah, we're good. We got plenty of goats and lambs and stuff. I don't need more descendants than stars. I can't support that. <laughs> we don't know that. We don't know that they were the very first ones asked, but we do know that they walked in faith, didn't they? They walked in faith. Even though um, it said in the scriptures I just read that, um, that Abram being old, you know, maybe some of you are close to the age that he was. It says here that he was as good as dead, so don't say that to your friend, okay? I know it's kind of an odd thing we read there in the scriptures. and talks about Sarah not having a child and being in old age and you know, when she was told she was going to have a child, she didn't believe it. But they walked in faith. They walked in faith. And their journey of faith 
is to be, I think, our journey. I, I, we should find our common faith with them, that God wants us to be a blessing to the nations. I know that there are things that we all hope for in our lives, and I thought about asking you all that and letting you share with your neighbor what are the things that, that you hope for. And The truth is, though, there are things that we hope for sometimes that don't really have anything to do with the Lord, do they? They have a lot to do with us. I think that as we grow older and as we journey with Christ longer, that hopefully our desires and the great longings of our heart match up with the will of the Father and His great desire and longing for adding value to people, for sharing love, for sharing the gospel and the good news. But sometimes our journeys with faith are faith put in the wrong places and the wrong people. As I said, our journey of faith should be rooted in Abraham and Sarah's. And we see the echo of, uh, of, of what God tells them in Genesis chapter 12. We see it in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, where Jesus tells his disciples to go and make more disciples that make more disciples that make more disciples that make more disciples. He says in verse 19, go and make uh, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and I am with you always to the end of the age. So let me ask you this, this morning. How, 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 do, how do your lives line up with those things? Your journey of faith. Do you rely on only the things you can see? When you take a step, is it only on the ground that you can see before you? Or do you step out in faith? Do you begin conversations with those where you feel like there are some things you need to say to them or some questions you need to ask, but maybe you're afraid of what box might be opened? Or maybe are you trusting in institutions of this world that yes, we need good and godly people in and leading, but we shouldn't trust them to give us faith. What are some things that we need to lay down? And is our journey of faith rooted in the gospel, in the good news of Jesus Christ? You know, our, our lives, my family's lives, the past four weeks have been kind of rough. Y'all, some of you have heard a little bit about it, and it's, um, you know, we've, uh, we've had, I was, uh, I so on uh, our last night of vacation, Saturday night, um, you know, we, uh, that was when Holly was going to preach the next morning. So one of our dog eat, dogs gets some gum that has some xylitol in it. And so I'm texting my vet here who's getting on a plane with her family to get out, to go to South Africa. And so she's like, I'm sorry, but I can't really help you anymore right now. Cause they, so they were on the vacation. So we're like freaking out. 15 minutes later, Holly calls and tells us that she has COVID. So I'm trying to figure that out. Turn around and the dog has peed on the bed. Okay? All right? That's wild, isn't it? Okay? And so... It was a night, let me just tell you. The next morning, we pack up and are leaving, and I'm just rejoicing, and I have the, I'm have i driving the truck, and Gene's driving the CRV, and I've got the, the phone on the side, and I'm listening to Dennis lead the worship service, and everything's good, and I'm with the Lord, and we get home, and we realize that we left a bag of laundry at the place, okay? So I had put all of our wet stuff from the Saturday into a plastic bag, trash bag, and laid it beside one of the beds. Well, all the white sheets got piled beside it, and it all looked the same, okay? So that's going on. Um, we, 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 get, we get back. We figure out that we've left it. Thankfully, I had met a neighbor, because that's what happens every time I go somewhere. I meet people. So I, I met the, the football coach of the local high school, who also happened to be um, a coach to, some, to a kid, to a girl and, and her. Uh, I want to say, okay, I've got to back up. Grew up in Scotland Neck, there was a, a, a guy and girl who were in my dad's youth group. They got married, and they had children. They lived at the Outer Banks. The children were phenomenal at sports, just so happened to meet his high school football coach. So we figured out the name. The guy went by. He was able to get our laundry and get it and mail it to us, okay? Then I had my stomach surgery. Y'all remember? So I had the, the, that. That was just a minor thing in the, in, in the grand scheme of things. Had the stomach surgery. Um, then Levi's got a stomach bug. They go up to, to, to Boone for the... For the baseball tournament, they come back, Gina gets sick, then Layla eats a bunch, that's our dog, Layla eats a bunch of kinetic sand, okay, that's not good. So we had an emergency visit to the vet, 
And that was just a whole nother, whole nother thing. Gina's sick in the midst of all this with her stomach stuff going on. And, uh, and then our sewage backs up into the house. Okay? I know. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a journey. And we're only halfway through. Okay? We've got two more weeks. Okay? So thankful Shauna and, and Phil, they're able to they come out on that Friday and they fix us up and, um, and get everything back going. And then, um, oh, where are we at? Okay, yeah, so Gina continues to be sick, and we, we, we end up in urgent care. We ended up in last weekend in the, uh, going to the uh, uh, emergency room. And all this has been going on. Thank the Lord the kids have been relatively good in just trying our patience and everything. Um, then our AC goes out on Tuesday, okay? And we just so happened to get a GI appointment that afternoon, so we had to go to that. And then the AC people couldn't come till the next morning and fix the AC. Then Layla and Christian get a rotisserie chicken, okay? They pull it down from the, from the counter, and it's full of bones. So I'm texting, texting Julia again, and um, I tell y'all, we were, I mean, it has been, it has been a trip. And then yesterday, we were going down East Horn Avenue, and someone runs Grimmersburg, I mean, uh, Contentnia, and about T-bones us. Thankfully, I slam on the brakes, whip it down Contentnia, hitting the horn at the same time to let them know that they should not be about to kill us. They look up, hit their brake, turn that way, put their phone down, and go like this. I'm telling y'all what. The devil's been out to get us. Something good is coming around the corner. I believe it. And there was, there was some other minor things that were in the midst of that. But I tell you, a good friend of mine, he's a pigeon man. He, uh, he, got into, he was in Vietnam. He got into all that Agent Orange stuff, got wrapped up in that. And it's just, just, uh, just um, he's in a bad way right now. But he's been in a bad way for about 20 years. He lives up in the uh, uh, Franklin County area. He, he'll always, always ask me, how you doing? He'll, he'll, he'll tell me the stuff. He says, now, but I need you to know I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. He said, the Lord's got me. The Lord's getting me through this. Eight different diagnoses, things he's been treat, treated for. Seems like cancer just keeps coming and coming and coming. He says, I know where it came from. I know what I, what I was fighting for. I know all of these things. I know the Lord. I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. He said, God, he said, God uses me, and he's going to keep using me until my dying day. And so I want to, I want to share, you, share with you some of this stuff this morning to tell you I'm not trying to complain, and we haven't complained in the midst of this journey at all, but I will explain to you that the faith that our family has experienced over these past four weeks, the, the way that we, we're praying together and seeking the Lord together versus the way that we have known that the way that we're going to get through this is the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. And the times of prayer that Gina and I, and, and Gina and I with our boys, the way that that prayer has looked now versus before, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that there's nothing else that can get us through that. To know our community of faith is there with us, fighting alongside of us, praying for us, that just has, 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 has increased the faith that we're experiencing together more and more. So we give you thanks, but I want to tell you that our salvation is not in you, it's in the Lord. Amen? 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 I mean, y'all have made some good food. Some good stuff, some, some sweet and kind notes and messages and stuff, but it has pointed us to who? To Jesus, right? You point, we point one another to the Lord, to Jesus. And it has been, let me tell you, it's been a trying time, but it has been a time of growth. It's been a time that our faith has been emboldened, that, that we have grown together as a family, that we have grown together in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So the conclusion this morning, I want to read, um, I want to read a parable of Jesus. It comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. It goes like this. Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea... Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice 
so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? It's an interesting parable that Jesus tells. It's an interesting position that he puts uh, the, the figure, uh, the more superior figure in. There's an unjust judge that a persistent widow needs to depend upon. We know God is not an unjust God. God is a just God. So how much more will he do the right things? But the question Jesus asks doesn't have to do so much with the judge, but it has to do with the faith that followers of Christ have in their lives. I've asked you in the midst of this sermon questions that hopefully cause you to think about the faith that you have put in Jesus Christ. And again, the hope through this series is that it will cause you to step to take greater steps of faith with him. So Jesus asks, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I mentioned earlier that the way worship looked for the early uh, Greek Roman culture, there was polytheistic worship. They would come into a court, a temple court that had statues to all of these Greek gods and goddesses. They even had one uh, to the unknown god. Paul refers uh, to that in one of his letters. But there was the Greek goddess Pandora, and she had her box uh, of, of uh, of tricks, uh, a, a box of blessings and a box that had also curses in it. And these people, these early people that Jesus was speaking to knew well the, the mythology and you know what many of them didn't see as mythology, they saw it as reality. And they believed that, that uh, the, the, uh, the Greek goddess Pandora had opened her box and that there was one of the blessings that had left. And this blessing's name was Pistes. Pistes. It's the, 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 the blessing of faith, trust, and, rea- and reliability. And what they believed was, was that Pandora had opened this box and these curses had come out upon people, but some of these good virtues and blessings had left. They had, they had escaped earth. They had seen everything. They are like, no, nah, I'm good. Faith, trust, reliability was completely gone. It had escaped. When Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He knows exactly what to say. And Jesus uses the word, uses the word pistes. When the Son of Man come, comes, will he find pistes on earth? All of you believe that that is escaped, that it is, it's gone away, that it's not attainable anymore. But through a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, based on the faith that we put in him, it just grows and grows and grows. Please join me for a moment of prayer. Holy Father, we thank you for the faith that you have gifted to us. And if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, Lord, the small seed in the garden, that it does eventually grow. I thank you for this church body. Lord, I thank you for us as individuals and I do pray that today and over the next two weeks that we'll consider our faith, our journey with you, that we might do things that cause that seed to grow and to bear fruit. God, help us to take a good look at ourselves and although faith is not seeing, and we don't look around and just see you standing there with us, God, we can spiritually see you. It is a type of seeing. And Lord, while our, our dominant culture will not support our faith and we shouldn't place faith in it, doesn't mean that our faith can't grow in you. And lastly, Lord, we do pray that we would experience lives of faith as we trust completely in what you're doing through us and the mission that you have to make disciples through our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. This time we'll have our
hymn of response. It is hymn number 483, The Savior is Waiting. And uh, I invite you to stand uh, for the singing of this uh, hymn of response. And if at this time anyone does uh, want to come down for prayer um, or perhaps to join the church or uh, to make a profession of faith and be baptized, in whatever way you come, I'll be here at the front to receive you in the name of Jesus. Please stand. Father, we thank you again for this day of worship that we've had. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the good things that uh, lie in store for us to do for you this week, to love our neighbor and, and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that we would be, would be found faithful in all of the things that we do as we follow your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to see you, Billy. 